Hello and welcome to Revive Your Soul. My name is Elizabeth Goddard and in this video we're going to talk about responding versus reacting. I'm going to look at what the difference is, how it plays out, where it's coming from and ideas on responding rather than reacting. When someone says something to you or behaves in a certain way, it's your responsibility the way you react. When you get communication from the emotional abuser, the narcissist, the sociopath, the psychopath, whatever label that you've put on this person, it's your responsibility to the way that you respond to that communication. And they do this for various different reasons. They know what buttons to push and they're using this to determine what attention they can get, to understand how deeply they've um, hurt you and they get great pleasure out of that. They use it to see that you're still invested in the relationship and you've still got some emotion towards them. They are contacting you for a reaction. It's as simple as that, that's all they're making contact for a reaction and it's your responsibility the way you respond. I've spoken about this a lot, the idealization stage and I'll put some links to those videos. During the idealization stage they were learning as much about you as they could and during the devaluation stage they were also learning how far they could push you and they were trying to get you invested into the relationship. At this point they've got a lot of information and they know what you're passionate about. They know, um, they know your wounds. They know information, they've got information. So they carefully word things or they reach out at certain points. And it's then down to you how you respond to that. In fact, they're doing it because they need you to respond in a certain way. And in a way, they need you to react. They need a response from you to say, look at this crazy person. And this is what I had to live with. This is what I dated. This is what I was married to. This person, look how they speak to me. Look how they treat me. So they're actually looking for a response from you. When you can understand why they're doing it, you can actually find the wound that they're triggering. It's like pick someone picking at a scab and if it's not quite ready, it hasn't quite healed, it hurts. And that is the bit we're looking for. We're looking for the bit that hurts. And it's at this point when you don't react and you've got no reaction for them, you know that you've healed. You know you've healed the wounds that they're trying to trigger. In fact, they are the damaged ones. I've said that in a few videos as well, and if I can find those, I'll, I'll link them in. They have the bigger wounds. They are looking at their empty um, people and they're looking to drain out as much of uh, somebody's soul as they can. So their aim here with you is to trigger you, to get that response, because any response, negative or positive, they're happy with. So they don't care if it's negative because it's a form of communication, it's a form of validation for them. And you're saying that you're validating how much they've hurt you. You're validating how much power and control they had over your life. You're validating them. And that's what they're looking for. They're just looking for attention. They invested their time at the beginning of the relationship they did have um, ulterior motives. Uh, they weren't invested in the same way that you were, but by reacting and not responding, what you're actually doing is you're giving them payback for that investment. Their investment of time was to discover your wounds and now they're going to use that information. They're going to take that information and they're gonna turn it against you so that they get attention in a different way. It's proving to them that they still have control over you, they still have power over you and they can still get a reaction from you. And they also use 
this reaction. Other people might be at the point of seeing the red flags and then they can use this. They can use the way you respond as a way of proving that they aren't the bad person that you actually are. So it allows them to play the victim. And you may look back at your behaviour and see it, it was unfamiliar maybe to you. You might have done things and said things that are completely unfamiliar to you. You might feel crazy and that is a reaction. We're all a bunch of chemicals held together in skin. We are like uh, a chemistry lab. You know, pe different people make us react in different ways. Different people bring out different elements of our personalities. If you were trauma bonded and subjected to emotional abuse, it's very possible that you felt like you're going crazy or you still do feel like you're going crazy. Maybe it feels like nothing makes sense. That future that you'd planned together has just been destroyed and you don't understand or you're questioning everything and you're wondering if only and maybe, those were big ones, if only and maybe, if only I'd done or said something, if only I hadn't done or said something, maybe if, maybe, those questions, if I'd handled something or done something differently and it wouldn't make any difference, you'd still be at this point. Don't give them the fuel to become the victim. This was a game and you didn't have the rules. Or if you started to learn the rules, which is part of the trauma bonding, they were moved, those goalposts were moved, the rules were changed and it confused you and it confused your mind. And at some point during that um, relationship, part of your brain switches off to protect itself because this behaviour causes brain damage. Everything they did during that cycle of abuse was done to control you and gain power. And as soon as they've got everything they need from you, as soon as you fulfilled what they need, whether that's the cover of, of being a stable person or being in a stable relationship, whether it's... Um, a financial thing for them, whether it's uh, an emotional thing, whether they need to feed their ego, whatever it was, once they've taken it from you, you're no use to them and they move on. And perhaps during your childhood, you experienced some of this behaviour. So it's it was a way of self-preservation. It was survival mechanisms, survival techniques. Uh, that you felt comfortable or you were easy to uh, to fall in to that scenario, to fall into that relationship. And I want to talk about the four Fs, fight and flight. The, what, the two that I learned about the fight and flight years ago were the, the scenario was, you, you know, we, we needed this response and it's a trigger response. We don't think about it. We don't judge the distance. So there's a tiger in front of you and you have to decide whether you're going to um, fight it or whether you're going to flee. We don't actually make any calculations. We don't uh, work out how, the distance, how big it is, how quickly it's gonna get to us. We just, it's a gut, gut feeling. It's a gut reaction and we make our move, whether we stay and fight or whether we run away, take flight. And there were two others. They are fawning and freeze. A fawning plays out, again, it's a protective split second uh, reaction, a stress response. Fawning is behavior and language that is calming down of a situation. It's something, again, that you intuit. You might feel that something is uh, has been triggered within them and you use your, the tone of your voice, your words, you calm the situation down. And then there's freeze, which is it is you freeze and play dead and your whole body freezes and you can't move. Your brain is working, but the rest of you isn't. That's a really strong trauma bonding response. Uh, not being able to make that decision whether to run or fight or being in a position to calm down. Your body just goes into that trigger and it freezes. What can we do? So let's take a scenario, you've received an email or a text message or some other message, a messenger, 
um, or WhatsApp message, whatever it is, you've received some form of communication. I've spoken about this technique in my video, seven things you can do to outsmart a narcissist. So I'll post that as a link. So I've used the um, terminology of stop, drop, roll. So in a, um, if you're on fire, they tell you in first aid, so you stop and you drop and you roll around to put the flames out. So stop, the communicate look at the looking at the communication put the phone down and then drop in to the emotion what is it that's actually being triggered and roll it around and see where it's coming from see where this actually comes from because i said they know your wounds they questioned you they found out as much information during the beginning of that relationship as they could and now they're using that information to get a reaction from you. Where is it coming from? What does it associate? The first thought, it might be from childhood or another scenario. And that is what you need to look at and heal. Stop, drop, roll. Stop what you're doing, put the phone down or whatever it is, walk away from it, put it in another room, leave it somewhere drop into the emotion and ask, where is this really coming from? They've got this information, they know about my wounds, what are they triggering? And what do I need to heal? Roll that emotion around, journal it out. There are so many different ways of working with that and understanding that. If you're able to, and you've got someone available, write out your reply and give it to somebody else and let them break it down, let them take out all of the emotion, let them take out everything and put the facts the way you need to respond, if you need to respond. And if you don't, ignore it, delete it. Remember, any way you respond is fuel to them. The fuel is attention, the fuel is knowing that they still have control over you, the fuel is knowing that they can still get to you, the fuel is knowing how how deeply they hurt you. Fuel to them proves how much you still care about them or that you've still got feelings for them, that they still have this power and control over you. What's the difference between reacting and responding? Reacting is coming from an emotion, it's emotion fed. Responding, respond with dignity and with grace. If you haven't done that before, don't beat yourself up. It plays out by them making contact. They're looking for attention. They're looking for proof. They're playing the victim. Where's it coming from? Where's your response coming from? Your response is coming from the information they found out about the wounds that you hold. They are pushing buttons, poking you with a stick. They are doing it because they want you. They want to. They want attention. They want to know how um, how powerful they were in your life and the fact that you are still coming back and you're still responding to them. And what can you do? Get other people to do that response and look and find out where those, those wounds are. Stop, drop, roll. If you found it useful, please like and share the video. Let's get this out. Let's get this understanding out there uh, because I think it's going to be much needed in the next few months. I think a lot more masks are going to be dropped. People are going to be understanding what's going on. They're going to, there's no end to the situation we're in at the moment. There's no end date. And emotional abusers don't like that. They don't like not knowing and they don't like not being in control. So please like and share. Um, leave some comments. If you've got ideas, things that helped you. Um, helps you particularly with trauma bonding which is going to be the next videos that I do and to do as much on trauma bonding as I can uh, and help people understand the pain and how difficult it is coming out of those relationships how difficult it is um, going no contact or grey rock uh, when that pain really really hurts it seems to be around about a three month period and then people seem to go back. And I don't know what that is, so I need to do some work on that. Uh, don't forget you can get your copy of um, The A to Z of Emotional Abuse. Uh, that's available on loads of different uh, platforms. 
So I put those links in the description below. So sending you loads and loads and loads of love.